Southeastern won an award last year for a major project, which was both at Ashford and Gravesend, with another big scheme at Tunbridge. Let's see if we can see it. I'm Nina Peak, and I'm Partnership Manager for South Eastern. Today we're at Tunbridge Cycle Hub with 276 parking spaces. Majority of them are two-tier cycle parking spaces. However, we do have some down the end which are for a child rack or a trailer or, or a different type of bike. The, the whole thing with Tunbridge is it's a commuter town. We've got over 100 bikes usually parked on the platform and they're absolutely chocker. So one of the things we were hearing was they wanted more cycle parking spaces and um, better security. We're finding more and more people are trying to use their bicycles to commute to the station and therefore they are inquiring more and more about the secure nature of bike racks here as well as the cycle hubs. So we are trying to encourage them and putting them in the right direction. I'm Fran. When they were first going to build this facility, um, Nina from South Eastern got in touch with us as well as the Kent County councillors and um, we came and met with them and had a look at the plans and nice to see. We were really pleased. We did suggest to her a wheeling ramp because it saves you having to pick up your bike and carry it. We went, worked with Kent County Council and Tunbridge and Morling Borough Council initially to ensure that what we were designing and building here was going to fit in with location. Now that was really key. Um, there was concern because we're opposite some houses and we didn't want to build anything that was going to be too dominant and um, the other concern was they didn't want to be overlooked. So where we originally thought it would be more of a glass building, similar to our Gravesend Cycle Hub, on this occasion, uh, it was decided to go for more of a brick built structure, um, which we actually we feel really fits in with this area. I think the key was that South Eastern decided to talk uh, constructively to uh, the Tunbridge Bicycle Users Group at the first opportunity, and uh, KCC. So we've got something that's fit for purpose. I think that's, you've, you have to get the stakeholder groups involved at the very, very start. When we first identified this site for the Cycle Hub, uh, it was a rather untidy area of the station. So uh, it was overgrown, um, it was tatty. We had down that side of the station was a canopy, the length of the building. So we worked with Network Rail to remove that. Originally it was just going to be a small portion, however once we got started Network Rail said could we please remove all of it as it was going to remove a maintenance liability for the railway and would reduce costs for the railway. So they gave us some money and we got on and delivered that. By delivering it as part of this project it also meant that it saved time for Network Rail, they didn't need to go out to tender as we already had a contractor here and on board. I'm Tim Middleton, I'm the Transport Innovations Programme Manager at Kent County Council. So we're outside uh, Tunbridge Station here. This is one of our uh, improvement schemes we did um, a couple of years ago um, to improve sustainable travel and encourage uh, walkers and cyclists to use the station a bit more and yeah. give them a little bit more space. Um, the footway, for example, was an awful lot more narrow originally, probably coming to where this grill was on the floor. Um, and we've widened the, the whole footway out, as you can see, introduced the bollards uh, for safety, and we did a whole junction rearrangement scheme over here. Very much funded by uh, doing works outside the front of the station. And at the front of the station, they've moved all the traffic lights and crossing points closer and totally changed the actual junction and widened the forecourt area. And that's had the impact of really improving access into the station. 
They were also doing work on the A26 cycle route between Tunbridge and Tunbridge Wells, and again, a really important link. We've been in contact with South Eastern throughout, even choosing the, the surface and the colour to make it um, easier to, to identify for those who have maybe have slight visual impairments. And we always knew, and the plan was for the hub, the cycle hub at the rear of the station to take place, um, so we've designed that hand in hand. definitely pay off. We're going to see the benefit of this in 5, 10, 15 years. I've just recently moved into Tunbridge so it would be really good for me as well. I am so excited about the Cycle Hub. Um, I'm really into uh, integrated transport and this for me is the real pinnacle of it. Um, Nina is the partnership manager at South East and she is here. Um, it's another very important project in your region. Um, I'm sure a lot of people look at that and say, we can't do anything on this scale. But you did point up, I think, some important principles um, that surely apply to any scheme. And I thought you might just say a word or two about what you think those really key principles are that we can all adhere to. Absolutely, Philip, thank you. Um, I think we're very, very lucky because we've got very good relationships with our partners. So by working to, together, we're able to identify where the future growth is going to happen. And by working with council, both local and county council, uh, we, we work quite closely to identify that, what's coming up, um, and see how we can work. And, and also with our, our cycle user groups, um, to identify where the growth is going to be and where we're going to need to uh, develop and deliver more cycle infrastructure. So every hub is um, specific for its location. I think that's got to be remembered. You know, it's all very well, you know, if you've got a lot of cyclists, because um, Tunbridge, of course, is, uh, is a commuter town. So, you know, we, we are having to provide a facility for a lot of people to be able to turn up and drop their bikes and go very quickly. So I think, you know, the, the Tunbridge this works really well. I think moving forward, um, it's all about, as I said, involving the local people, understanding what the community wants and um, looking at how we deliver that, that uh, in partnership with the, with the councils. So, um, you know, it's very, very important to be able to provide the right walking and cycling infrastructure for people to access work and education. So for us, this is just what we wanted to do. And I think, you know, if, if you do that and look if you can only build something small at that particular point, perhaps look at uh, designing something that can be expanded later on. I think that's very key as well. Nina, thank you very much. Anybody think we'd rehearse this? Um, that's, that's terrific. Um, there are one or two points there, not least about being able to expand things. Um, we really do look forward to your next instalment. Um, I've had a sneak preview, so I know that um, you've got some other projects um, up your sleeve. Um, your enthusiasm is most infectious. Thank you very much indeed. That's a, that's a great video. Um, and we saw most of it, so it's fantastic. We're going to hold our breath now and hope that we can get another example to show you. Uh, this one comes from uh, Transpennine Express. The video isn't quite as lavish as Nina's. Um, it was shot in Huddersfield, uh, and in Hull. Um, it was raining in Huddersfield, you may be surprised to know at the time. And just to warn you in advance, uh, if we see the video, you won't be seeing the station cats today. So let's take a look at Huddersfield and at Hull. Hi there, I'm Andy Krogan and I'm the station manager of Transpennine Express at Huddersfield Railway Station. This is our cycle hub. The modern facility which offers secure and safe cycle storage for people who want to bring their cycles into the station before they travel on our trains to where they need to get to. We've 
currently holds 54 cycle spaces, which before the COVID pandemic was a very popular place, and very busy. Not quite as busy today, but we expect our cyclists to come back in their numbers. And therefore, because we're expecting it to increase in popularity, we're extending the size of our cycle hub to include an extra 36 spaces so we can welcome the cyclists who came before and additional cyclists who want to bring their cycles into the station before they take them up, before they go through to work. And this is the area where we're extending our cycle storage into. As I say, an extra 36 spaces covered by CCTV, offering safe and secure cycling parking. My name's Natasha and I'm the Accessibility and Integration Manager for Transpennine Express. And while the rain stopped, I just wanted to tell you why Huddersfield's been a difficult project for us. Huddersfield is a listed building station and we've had to get listed buildings consent before ever other consents for each of the storage facilities that we're creating. So back in 2016 we needed listed buildings consent for our original structure which we have here and now we're needing to reapply for this for the extension. It's quite a lengthy process with lots of drawings and other people involved and through Covid obviously this has been extenuated so hopefully we can get this resolved soon. Good afternoon, my name's Alex Berry, I'm the Customer Communications Manager at Transpennine Express, so I deal with all things customer information systems, passenger information systems on the stations and on the trains. Um, today I'm here to show you the new cycle hub at Hull Paragon Station. So this was introduced in September 2020. Because of the lockdown and the other issues, uh, other challenges with Covid, uh, we've not really seen the traffic uh, and patronage that we expected. Um, we're hoping to use this as customers begin to travel again, as a, as a reason to get people to start travelling. Um, I'll show you the inside, there's 160 spaces in here. This was all par partially funded by the Department for Transport and Sustrans, who uh, specialise in the accessibility point of view. Um, there's already a few customers who are using the facility, but as you can see there's many more spaces to utilise. And this is what we hope to use to get people back on the railway. Um, Natasha, and Natasha Mose is with us. Uh, she's the Accessibility and Integration Manager. Natasha, I was going to ask you a bit about Huddersfield, but I think the point was made about the opportunity to extend and the difficulty with listed buildings. Perhaps as um, Chris has already visited Hull, we can focus uh, your remarks um, just today on uh, that bike hub that you opened last September, 160 spaces. What terrible timing at Hull Paragon. Um, so what are you going to do now? How are you going to recoup all that brilliant work and get it up and running and in use? I think Hull's really thriving. Um, I'm a previous Hull resident, so I've definitely got to big it up. And now we've got people like Chris Heaton and Harris coming. We're getting all the greats, so it's, uh, it's on the off. We don't need us. Um, but Hull, we've had the city of culture where there's a lot of investment going into Hull as a city. And I think this is just a supporting. It's the cherry on top, really. It's it's what people need to get them to work, to get them to actually explore Hull and come into the city. So I think it's a really great opportunity for us to have an excellent facility to really bolster our, our uh, patronage again. Very good. I think it is too. Um, and if it takes another visit from the minister to uh, just give it an extra boot, I'm, I'm sure it'd be up there. I mean, some people think that Hull's the end of the line, but it's absolutely not. It's just the beginning. Natasha, well done. And thank you very much to you, to Andrew and to Alex and for braving that, um, that wet day in Huddersfield.